Hi friends, this is me Payal Dada and in today's video I am going to help you with the line by line explanation of Act 2 Scene 1 from William Shakespeare's play The Merchant of Venice. Please hit the like button if you like my video and don't forget to subscribe. So now we begin. Scene 1. Belmont. A room in Portia's house. Enter the Prince of Morocco, his followers, Portia and Nerissa. Here we find Portia meeting the Prince of Morocco who wants to marry her by trying his luck with the cascades. So Morocco says, Mislike me not for my complexion, the shadowed livery of the burnished sun to whom I am a neighbour and near bred. Here Morocco tells Portia that he got his dark complexion because of the burnished sun. He was born and raised in a country where the fiery sun is very close to the earth. The shadowed livery refers to his dark uniform. Bring me the fairest creature northward born, where Phoebus's fire scarce thaws the icicles, and let us make incision for your love to prove whose blood is reddest, his or mine. Now, people born in the north are fair-skinned. By fairest, Morocco refers to those handsome and pale-skinned men who are born in the north. They were fair because the sun's rays are so faint in the north that they are hardly able to melt the frost or snow. Now, Phoebus in Greek mythology is one of the names given to the classical sun god Apollo. Phoebus' fire refers to the rays of the sun. Morocco proposes that he should be matched with any fair-skinned man who is born in the north. Why? To prove whose blood is reddest, his or mine, he says that they should open their veins to see whose blood is the reddest. The Elizabethans believed that red blood was the sign of good spirit and courage. He then goes on to say, I tell thee, lady, this aspect of mine hath feared the valiant. By my love I swear, the best regarded virgins of our clime have loved it too. I would not change this you, except to steal your thoughts, my gentle queen. Here we find Morocco boasting about his appearance. He says that his physical appearance frightened the brave men. He says that his physical appearance feared the valiant. The prettiest woman of his country, on the other hand, whom Morocco describes as best regarded virgins of his clime, admired his appearance too. Clime refers to country. From Morocco's opening speech, we know that the Prince of Morocco is a warrior and he is also very self-assured. He has a large imposing physical appearance and he is proud of his dark complexion. He is an egoist who thinks he is better than any other person. He boasts of his red blood and how brave men are frightened by his appearance. He also mentions that the best regarded virgins of his country admired him and he would not change his hue, that is his colour, his complexion, except to make Portia think of him as his gentle queen. To this Portia replies that being good looking is not the only way to win her heart. She reminds him of the criteria for choosing herself a husband. She says, in terms of choice, I am not solely led by a nice direction of a maiden's eyes. Besides, the lottery of my destiny bars me the right of voluntary choosing. She says that she is not influenced by what her eyes tell her to do. The lottery of Portia's destiny refers to the lottery devised according to her late father's will. According to the will, each suitor had to choose from amongst the three caskets of gold, silver and lead, the one containing Portia's picture. The suitor who will make the correct choice will win Portia's hand in marriage. This lottery forbids Portia from voluntary choosing, that is choosing what she wants. It prevents her from exercising her freedom of choice. But if my father had not scanted me and hedged me by his wit to yield myself his wife who wins me by the means I told you, 
yourself, renowned prince, then stood as far as any comer I have looked on yet for my affection. So she says that if my father had not scanted me, scanted meaning restricted me and hedged me by his wit, hedged me meaning bound me by his wit, his wisdom, to yield myself his wife who wins me by the means I told you. The means refers to the lottery of caskets. I told you. Here Portia puns on the word fair. Fair implies to Morocco's fair chance. But it also refers to the fair-skinned who Morocco had already mentioned before. That is the fair-skinned people of the north. Portia does not really mean that Morocco had a good chance of winning her love because in Act 1, Scene 2, she holds her former suitors in contempt. She thinks the same of Morocco because he is boastful. So she says that renowned prince, renowned prince here refers to Morocco himself, that even though she says that she stood a fair chance. She is actually trying to be tactful and she is trying to pretend that she holds him in a high esteem. Morocco says, even for that I thank you. Therefore, I pray you, lead me to the caskets to try my fortune. So Morocco says, that even for that, I thank you for not being color prejudiced and asks her to lead him to the caskets. He goes on to say that all those brave deeds that he would be doing in order to win Portia. He says, by this scimitar that slew the Sophie and a Persian prince that won three fields of Sultan Solomon, I would owe stare the sternest eyes that look. I would brave the heart most daring on the earth. Pluck the young sucking cups from the she-bear, yeah, mock the lion when she rose for prey, to win thee, lady. So he says that he could defy the sternest eyes by his scimitar, that is his sword. He claims that he had defeated the Sophie. The Sophie was the emperor of Persia and a Persian prince who won three battles against Sultan Solomon with his sword. Sultan Solomon was the leader of the Turks who fought against the Persians in 1535. Morocco then goes on to say that he could scare the bravest heart, pluck the young cubs from the she-bear without the fear of being attacked and even mock at a hungry lion roaring for its prey. He could do all these deeds to win Portia. But, alas the while, if Hercules and Lycaeus play at dice, which is the better man, the greater throw, may turn by fortune from the weaker hand. Here Morocco alludes to Hercules. Hercules in classical Greek mythology was renowned for his manliness, strength and his exploits. Lycaeus was his servant. According to the legend, Hercules and Lycaeus were playing a game of dice. By chance, the winning throw came from Lycaeus. So is Alcides beaten by his page. And so may I, blind fortune leading me, Miss that which one unworthier may attain and die with grieving. Alcides is another name for Hercules, meaning the son of Alcaeus, and his page over here refers to Lycaeus. This example is appropriate to Morocco since his fame, wealth and all his achievements are of no help to him when it comes to winning Portia. He is forced to take his chance against any inferior rival. Blind fortune leading me. Your fortune refers to the goddess of fortune. She is usually represented as blind due to her unaccountable variations in her giving of gifts and favors to mankind. Morocco fears that as the blind fortune is leading him to choose the right casket, the outcome depends only on chance as in the game of dice. To this, Portia replies, You must take your chance and either not attempt to choose at all, or swear before you choose if you choose wrong never to speak to lady afterward in way of marriage. Therefore, be advised. So before Morocco leads himself to make his choice, Portia 
tells Morocco that he must take a chance. He must either leave the matter altogether or not make an attempt to swear an oath and if he makes a wrong choice, then he will never speak to any lady in a way of marriage. On being warned by Portia, Morocco asks her to lead him to the caskets. He says, Nor will not come bring me unto my chance. To this Portia says, First, forward to the temple. After dinner, your hazard shall be made. She tells him that they shall first go to the temple and then the gamble shall be ready after dinner. On hearing this, Morocco says, Good fortune then to make me blessed or cursed among men. He accepts what Portia says and waits to see whether he would be blessed to win Portia or be cursed among men. And then they all exit. So this is the end of Act 2, Scene 1 as Portia leads the rest of the dinner. So please like and share your views in the comment section below. If you have any questions, please leave it in the comment section. I will definitely answer and I will try my best to explain in the most simple words possible. And please don't forget to subscribe.